This video is dedicated to all the unread books on your shelf and to all the books that you did read but you don't retain a single thing. Two problems that we are going to address in this video. One is that you don't get time to read or you procrastinate it to an extent that you lose interest. Second, you have read many books but that hardly makes any difference as you don't remember much about them. To start with, I have a simple advice. Create goals. I believe progress should be measurable. Only then you will be able to look at it and take actions to improve it. Now if you make a goal of reading a book in a month, then it is not going to work. Make short goals. Pick a book and decide that I will finish these many pages every day. That way, even if you get a little time, you will utilize that for reading. Even if you are taking small steps, you are moving forward. And if you don't make page goals, you will procrastinate reading the book because you don't have a day's time or two. Now for most of us, book reading is boring because it is a task to us and not a habit. If you want to build a reading habit, then read for pleasure. Let it be slow. Let it take time, but read for pleasure. There is no point in reading if you don't enjoy it or if you don't understand each and everything. Now, this tip is for when you are enjoying your time, when you have a lot of time for building the habit of reading. If it's the habit that you want, then like any other habit, it will take time to develop. Rome wasn't built in a day. But I don't recommend this for exams or when you are reading a non-fiction book. Let me explain to you why these two cases are different. When you are reading a non-fiction book, let's say a management book, you read it to gain something out of it. And you definitely want to retain what you read. Also, more number of books you read, more knowledge you will gain. So you want to read more and more books in less time. In that case, you should read with a sense of urgency in mind. Same is the case when you practice reading for your exam. The topics that come usually are not something an average reader will read for fun. They are random topics from which you want to retain as much as you can. So when you read such books or such articles, here is the approach I want you to take. And it's going to be different for books and a little different for blogs and articles. When reading an informative book, take important notes side by side in a diary. Of course, you can use a highlighter too, but nothing beats taking notes. Cause when you are writing, it settles in your mind. And in future, if you ever feel like referring it again, you can just go through the notes. What about difficult words that you come across while reading? Well, stopping again and again to refer dictionary would ruin the whole experience. Instead, when you come across a difficult word, you should try to figure out the meaning contextually. If still you are not able to guess, then simply move on. This process of giving thought to that word will put it to the back of your mind and in future, if you come across the same word, you can again see what context is it used in. For words coming more frequently, I advise my students to keep an Oxford Pocket Dictionary handy. Look for the word you are coming across frequently in the Oxford Dictionary. See its meaning. Try to make a sentence with it based on your life or daily routine. Like if the word is serendipity, which means accidental happiness. Then the sentence related to my life will be getting a phone call from an old student was a serendipitous experience. Next, put a tick mark using a pencil on that word. After a month or so, you will have marked many such words in the dictionary. Then when you will search a word on the same page, you will find many other words that you have marked earlier. And this time, you can simply go through those other words on the same page and try to guess their meaning. This way, you will get a regular dose of practice every time you look for a new word. Also. Putting so much effort in looking for the word in a physical dictionary helps it register in your mind. For reading blogs and articles, 
there is a little modification in this technique. The modified technique is what I call as flowchart approach, in which you make a flowchart of gist and ideas you come across in each paragraph. This improves the overall understanding of the passage. This also helps in developing a knack for finding main idea and summary of the passage. There are other approaches as well like skimming, in which you skim the irrelevant data and focus on what is important. We have covered skimming and flowchart techniques in separate videos. In short, this is how the reading process for a beginner should be. You start with fiction so as to develop interest, start reading for fun and when you have been through enough of such books, switch to non-fiction. Switch to books from versatile topics that I have suggested in the what to read video. And take notes while reading those books based on philosophy, economy, sociology and culture. Lastly, for this one new habit, I will ask you to drop one old habit. If in case you have it, <clears throat> cell phone addiction. Don't overload your brain. You don't have to watch every video that goes viral. You don't have to read every Facebook post that is there in your news feed or every WhatsApp forward posted in your group. Limit your time on social media. Give some time to yourself. Give time to improving yourself because you are the person you are going to spend most of your life with. Practically all of your life. One last thing to end this video with. Read whenever you can and wherever you can. It all boils down to this one thing. If you really want to develop reading habit, pick a book and start reading.